this talk is about vector graphics in quiz small talk. So I want to start with a with a short, hopefully very short historical perspective on what this is all about. This is a, a Xerox star. Um, since a Xerox Park work started on, on the Xerox Alto and maybe a bit earlier, uh, people have been building software to do graphics on, on computers. The, the Xerox Alto and the Xerox Star that was a commercial product were interesting because they were the, the first system where you hoped to get a printed page with exactly the same content uh, as on the screen. What you see is what you get, this was called, okay? Uh, the Alto was specifically designed to, to be able to, to do this kind of things. But uh, shortly, these two technologies, the printed page and the computer screen started to diverge. Um, computer displays uh, got better at showing interactive stuff, stuff that changes quickly. Uh, so high performance is important. Um, and over time, they started to get um, very good uh, gray and later color depth using many bits to, to specify the colors in each pixel, okay? Uh, but they stayed low resolution for many, many years. Uh, and the user interfaces that started to be designed for, for them uh, forgot uh, what one of the objectives of, of of the original design in the Alto and the Star that 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 was to make the stuff that could be shown on the display uh, independent of whatever hardware you had, um, and and the user interfaces started to be designed specifically for a computer platform and for a pixel resolution with the stuff that is shown made at specific pixel sizes. On the other hand. Printers got better at, at pixel resolution, okay? Uh, they started with probably the same resolution, but print, laser printers and most printers started to be able to do very high quality and very high resolution uh, output. Uh, and that forced it making everything resolution independent, okay? Nobody ever had any trouble uh, with the stuff looking different on a 300 DPI printer or a 1200 uh, DPI printer. So portability was a reality almost from the start uh, with systems such as Tech, PostScript, and PDF. But gray and color depth sticked to one bit per pixel. So the smaller dot that could be shown printed by a printer was either on or off. This is different from a computer display. And they used half toning uh, for emulating uh, shades, gray and color shade. And they also slower or, or have been slower for a long time, okay? But in recent years, computers got way faster uh, and displays got much better, okay? Even though current software doesn't know what to do with that high resolution. And that's why we have a, lots of problems calling uh, regular user interfaces to, to different displays. Uh, people using any major plat PC platform like Linux, Mac, or Windows, uh, have had a problem when using high resolution displays. Uh, but we can do better, okay? We can do better than that. The, the um, approach, uh, the obvious approach um, is to write a, a new user interface framework, okay? That is based on vector graphics and not on pixels. This is not a new idea. Previous systems such as News and Displays Postscript were attempted, but uh, the, 
the computers at that time in the late 80s were not fast enough to run them and so the experience wasn't good at all but now it can be done so uh, what is needed to to make this real i needed a new small talk system a small talk system that could evolve okay that is not tied to whatever was built with it at the time uh, and I'm talking about Squeak. I, I needed a, a, a something like Squeak, but that could evolve. The result is Quiz Smalltalk. And a new redesign in the user interface framework that I called Morphic 3. And this and then needed a, a better graphics engine. So, Quiz is a, an open source small talk system uh, forked from Squeak many years ago, many years ago. Uh, and the idea is, is to make it simple enough so it can evolve and not become legacy software. Okay. It runs on the same open small talk virtual machine as the rest of the Squeak family. And it is a very practical and useful system used for many applications uh, and as you see on the slide and others too, okay. I also did a new redesign of Morphic where all, Morphic is a user interface framework designed by Sean Maloney uh, for self and later Squeak. And this is a, a new third iteration on that design where all coordinates are floating point and not integer. So they don't specify pixels, but real positions on a real plane. Uh, also all coordinates are relative to, to a more local coordinate system and not global. So they are not specifying pixel position. And this coordinate system can be scaled and rotated. And that gives us resolution independence. Okay, so we completely forget about pixels. And we use vector graphics primitives and art uh, and try to avoid pixel oriented primitives and, and art, but we can use them if, if needed. Okay. So uh, when I started this project and I started using the, the old balloon uh, vector graphics engine in, in Squeak, I didn't like the results. Okay. Then I tried Cairo, uh, the very popular uh, vector graphics engine, and I didn't like the results either. And I had specialized in image and signal processing at the university. So I knew the theory that that should be applied. Okay, so we, we should stop using computer graphics algorithms and start using signal processing theory. Um, the, the result from the signal processing theory point of view is much greater flexi real flexibility in design and choosing an anti-aliasing filter. And that allows us to really avoid aliasing and pixelation. Okay, I, I developed uh, a new set of algorithms for, for working with for applying this well-known signal processing theory uh, and the last bullet in, in that uh, slide is uh, a short paper I, I published about it. Okay. The, the next things will be uh, a demo. The demo is based on, on material uh, I wrote for, for a chapter of the quiz book. The quiz book is a uh, um, new work, uh, a new project led by Hilaire Fernandez uh, with uh, help from Ken Dike and I. Um, we wrote together this, this book and chapter seven uh, is a description of, of Morphic in the line of what I want to show uh, today. So I will exit this presentation now. Uh, I will remove this. And this is the current uh, PDF, the current draft PDF of the um, quiz book. Okay, it, it starts with uh, 
a description of what small talk is all about and then a practical explanation for for newcomers to to small talk uh, i'm very proud of of what we have done here uh, so i i suggest everybody take a look at it uh, i i hope you will enjoy it okay so let's jump to morphic well um, this is chapter seven of, of the book on, on which I am basing the, the demo that I will start right now. What is morphic all about? Okay, morphic, the idea of morphic is to, to take the fundamental idea of small talk that everything is an object to the user interface. So in a, in a morphic user interface, everything is a morph. Any object that can appear on a display and interact with. Okay, so it's not based on, on, on the idea of solving a problem like most user interface toolkits. Um, the, the idea is to, to be flexible enough so you can have any kind of graphical interactive objects on your display. Uh, can you see my my quiz desktop? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. So it's been only twenty minutes so far. We are okay. Okay. So, uh, what is the simplest graphical object we might try to build? Um, the obvious answer is a straight line. Okay. So I have here a few files with uh, some of the code from the examples from the book. So I will show them to you using the, the regular small dot tools in, in quiz, okay? So the simplest morph we can try to build is a, is a line and a single, a straight line doesn't need much code, okay? We define a class, line example morph. It's a subclass of movable morph and it has a single method. Can you see the code for the method now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, in Morphic, uh, Morphs have a drawn method where they, they draw themselves. And the argument is a canvas. A canvas is an object provided by the framework that has drawing primitives, okay? So our straight line tells the canvas we want to draw something with a, with a pen with a width of 20 something in color green. And then what we are doing, a block that says, move to this position and draw a line, okay? That, that's all. So it will draw a line between this point uh, with a, some width and some color. Okay, this is our line. Um, as I told you before, uh, each morph defines its own coordinate system. So let's see what is the coordinate system for this morph here. It is this one, okay? Can you see the coordinate system axis? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. In, in quiz, the halo uh, also shows the coordinate system uh, and it's tailored for, for whatever the morph needs, okay? And as I told you before, a coordinate system can be scaled, okay? Or rotated, okay? So this, is the, the, these are the fundamental ideas of the Morphic 3 implementation of Morphic in, in Quiz, okay? Um, some things that we can do, this is not specific uh, to us, but the other Morphic implementations can do this. We can grab our Morph here and open a menu and say we want to make it submorph of the other line and then both of them go together. Something that is interesting here that you may not notice is that you can grab the morph with the hand and you don't grab it if you click outside the line, but we didn't need to implement a method to check for geometry and validate the the 
point to say whether it belongs to the morph or not. Uh, that that is a major source of complication in the other implementations of morphic is not needed here. That is handled automatically by the framework. Okay. So let's now do a slightly more interesting morph. This is our triangle example. Let me file in just this method. We only have uh, an initialize that picks two colors and a couple of store instructions, nothing else. If we create an instance, this is an instance, this is another instance, this is another instance. They have different colors, transparency, etc. We can, as before, embed one inside the other and then grab them as a unit and as usual rotate and scale okay but we can do more stuff than this that's beautiful it's fantastic thank you okay thank you very much yes uh, I worked a lot on, on correctly applying signal processing theory to, to the rasterization of the vector graphics. So, yes, it looks better than most. <laughs> uh, we'll tell our, our morph that it wants to receive steps. Steps are signals, periodical signals from, from the framework that triggers some action. So the morph can do stuff uh, without needing we to tell it via messages. Okay, it's periodic activity. So if we, if we file in all this code, we say that we want steps, that we want to be stepped every 100 uh, milliseconds. 10 times per second and this is what we are going to do on each step okay so well, if you yes. create the 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 things in the first place and join them together without the step method and then you turn on the step method does that work or does that break is that something that you can turn on dynamically or is that something that has to be on from the uh, the moment that morphs are created uh, it should work i haven't tried it for this demo but if i do self stop Stepping, it should just stop stepping, okay? Uh, and then I can, for example, create another one. It you should know, be possible. Next time you give this demo, join the three up and then file in the stepping methods. And if you can, you can get the thing that you've already connected to then suddenly start rotating. You're going to be, uh, <laughs> that would be incredibly fantastic to see. Okay, we can, hmm, interesting. Um, yeah, we can try it and, and see if it works, okay? Mm -hmm. No problem, no problem. So we'll, let's start all over uh, again. This is very, very visible as is, so, oh, gorgeous. Wow. That's a beautiful font. I want that in my <laughs> script now. I want to write okay. my own that thing. I will be more elegant. I will say that that's a beautiful anti Allison. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that, that font is included uh, in the in the quiz repo by default. Uh, I picked uh, a, a small set of, of free fonts that could be included without trouble, and I included it. Okay, so. Let's start where we were. Um, okay, so I will, I don't have the stepping call. Okay, again, I will 
create a couple of triangles over here. Mm. And let's see if we can make it work um, this time. Okay, so here we have them. And now I will file in the, the rest of the code. Note to self further on that as you go through the, uh, the menu of um, uh, morphs to embed in, so the, uh, the, the menu uh, selection should mirror uh, a highlighting of the morph itself. That would be super cool. The morph, this. Mm. So as you go through the list of, of morphs that you're, you know, you say embed into, and it gives you yeah. all of the other morphs, right? It'd be great is if, if you skip through. Oh, the yeah. yeah. Yeah, I get uh, to, to get visual feedback on which morph you are talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I hope I will remember to add it afterwards. Yeah, it can be done, of course. Well. Well, here it is. It, yes. they, they, they are starting to work. Okay, but the, what I was trying to do is to do something a bit more interesting in the step message, in the step method. Don't okay. do it. The last time you did. Yeah. Uh, well, but this is what we are here for. Okay. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's oh, no. fantastic. Beautiful man. Okay, and now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, bravo, what, bravo. There, there is a reason why why this may have a hit on the computer, and it is that I haven't yet built a primitive code for the rasterization. So <gasps> every pixel is being drawn in small talk code right now. It's not using anything, any C or assembly or DLL or FF5 or anything at all. Wow. Yeah. So Juan, uh, yeah. one thing is that we are looking at this from Zoom. So uh, the quality is not the same as you get in your display. Yeah, I guess. So you have to tell us <laughs> how beautiful it looks great. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let me tell you, uh, this, this is just a demo. I really encourage everybody who, who likes this kind of stuff to, to um, clone the Git repo and run it yourself on your machines. Uh, the, the quiz book is, is online also, and this stuff is chapter seven. So if you want to play for an hour or two with this kind of, of, of stuff, you can do it right now. Um, I will show you a little bit of the code that that does the actual rasterization. Okay, this is the, the code for the engine. Um, and we remember that 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 in the draw on we we send a message setting up uh, the general parameters for the drawing and then uh, vector graphics operations that are drawn using that color and, and stuff. So one of the operations we do is to uh, blend, well, I, I would need to explain the algorithm for, for this, but this is the, the method that actually modifies the, the pixels on, this, on the display. So it does all this math you can learn about and does target form bits byte at put, okay? If I remove this, it will draw nothing. And uh, when this gets uh, a decent primitive, uh, when all this code is if running in native code, it will be much faster. That, that's what I was trying to, to say. 
but the thing that happened this year was that a uh, healer joined our community, Gilero Fernandez, the author of Dr. Gio, a wonderful project. And he started to show interest in, in this and he wanted to be able to use it. And I rushed to make it usable. So uh, the, the primitive code will later be written. I'm thinking on a VM plugin written in, in plain C for this. Uh, and it's a kind of detail we can get into later if you want. Okay, so I have uh, yet another example to show you that I hope it works better than, or at least it works the first time we tried. Um, and it's a, a clock, okay? We have all the elements we, we need to, to build a clock. And right now I just filed in the class definition and this drawn method, okay? So if we create a clock, this is what you get. Some, somebody, some of you, maybe those who, who live in Argentina may recognize the, the prestigious brand of this clock. It is a Shakir par la minori. Yeah. And nobody laughs. Okay. It, it, <laughs> it, it was invented by Le Luthier for one of their shows. Uh, I, I thought everybody was. I funny. did. I did. I was mute, but I did one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I also created the hands. Okay, and the hands look like this. This is a hand for the hour. This is a hand for the minute. And this is a hand for the seconds. And as you imagine, you can also do this kind of stuff with the hands, of course. So, um, I want the rows. Yeah. This class is the only thing they have is a small draw on method. Okay, that, that draws this polygonal shape with hard coded measures and nothing else. Um, and we can build our clock by setting the instance variables with the hands, okay? And now I will remove this. Oh, by the way, the coordinate system stuff works on any kind of morph, right? So mm -hmm. you can study and understand what the coordinates mean for, for any morph in the system. Um, well, our clock will want steps. And now the method that updates the clock, the method that updates the clock, all it has to do is to give each hand an appropriate rotation, okay? Uh, as a now, as a day has, as a one, uh, rotation of the clock means 12 hours. We have 30 degrees per hour because 30 by 12 is 360. And similarly for the hand for minutes and seconds. So I load this code and now our clock works. Okay. And as you can imagine, well, you can, of course, clone it. Uh, you can squeeze it. You, you need to, to run this on your machine and maybe get a magnifying glass to see how the anti-aliasing on these nice fonts looks. It looks really nice. Um, and something else that you can do, for example, yeah, there you have the, 
coordinate system of the second hand that rotates as, as the wow. hand rotates. Um, and essentially, that's it. This is the, uh, the, the demo I had prepared for today. I can sh show you a couple of additional things. Um, but the key idea here is that building modes that are interactive, that are dynamic, that uh, are animated, and that have high visual quality, that they look as they should, uh, doesn't require too much coding, OK? The drone of the clock draws the face that is just a, a circle. A circle is an ellipse with the same radius in x and y direction. Okay, then I just draw the the labels, and that's it. Okay, if I don't need the labels, all the code in the clock is just the leaves, right? All the rest of the stuff is there just to to make it more interesting. So uh, a minimal morph is something that is really small. Uh, and, um, and the hands are, are, are even simpler, as all they have is one drawing operation, OK? Um, something else that I wanted to, to show that is, th this finishes the the main idea I wanted to, to show that building morphs should not be complicated, OK? Uh, morphic wasn't designed to be complicated. If it became complicated afterwards is uh, because it has grown uh, without the required care for avoiding complexity, OK? But, but it can be done better, and I I tried to, to do it better. Um, now I want to show you uh, a couple of things that this vector graphics engine can do. I hope the display updates properly for you to see. Uh, I wrote an SVG. SVG is a standard file format for vector graphics, and I wrote an SVG uh, parser that turns it into small talk objects that represent what is inside the, the SVG file, and that can be uh, drawn. Okay, so these are some examples I don't of SVG files I downloaded for from the web, uh, and they can obviously be drawn with different uh, scale, rotation, everything, OK? Like all the rest of the stuff. Um, so you can run these examples on, on your own machine to see them free of any uh, compression artifact by Zoom or, or whatever. Um, and something else I want to show you Is this um, you saw those nice uh, fonts, text rend rend renderized with, with nice fonts? The font we are using right now is a true type font, it's a vector graphics font, uh, and it can be used. Yeah, we can use everybody liked this Alex Brush font, so we can use it for on the system, of course, there's no reason. Uh, not two, and we can make it bigger so we can read it easier. Okay. Uh, and this is a true type font, and I used the the Morphic Three Vector Graphics Rasterizer to draw them. Okay. This is not using a third party uh, true type rasterizer such as 
uh, free type or, or, or whatever. We're using only pure small top code uh, to draw the true type fonts and cache them in, in a bitmap for this uh, display. Um, and I also wrote some Unicode. Uh, what is this? Sorry, I don't know what is this. Some Unicode support. And there you can see some samples uh, rendered on, not only on, on Latin glyphs, but also uh, Chinese, uh, Hindi, uh, Hebrew, uh, and many others I don't even remember, uh, Greek, um, um, and others, yeah. So, One, Cyrillic, uh, somebody is, so, sorry to interrupt you, but somebody is yeah. asking if uh, the buttons on the windows are not vector graphics because they, they look pixelated. Yes, exactly. These are not vector graphics. These are regular bitmaps. They are the same. We use um, at this size. At, at, at this size, they are unscaled, but to draw them at larger scale, uh, at larger scale, the 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 bitmaps are scaled so they look pixelated. Um, my idea for uh, when when, but I I will do this only after building the the VM plugin for for the rasterizer is to replace all these bitmap icons with vector graphics icons. So they will look better at any at any display resolution. Uh, we are still in a transition to using this. Uh, for example, if if we inspect the world, maybe I should change the font so you can read easier. No, it's lovely. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, no. The, Please don't. Yes. Okay, cool. The, the world holds a canvas. It's a canvas that is used for drawing everything. But this canvas is a hybrid canvas. And a hybrid canvas Well, this is the morphic canvas hierarchy, okay? The morphic canvas hierarchy, it's hard to, to get, uh, there it is. Mm -hmm. Has the regular bit bleed canvas, that is what uh, is used by default when you launch quiz, okay? If you start quiz, it will use the regular bit bleed canvas. That is this, essentially the same that is used by Squeak, although in Squeak, is, it has a different name. Um, I, I choose this more clear name, uh, telling that it is based on bit bleed. And I wrote the new vector canvas uh, that uses the new uh, vector graphics engine. But drawing everything in pure small talk is a bit too slow. And here you can see that this drawing has no performance problem. It runs essentially at, at the same speed as if it was in bit bleed. So what I wrote for, for only for provisory use, for, for interim use, is this hybrid canvas. That is a subclass of bit bleed canvas that only draws use, that adds a new instance variable that is called vector canvas, that is only used to draw boards that cannot be drawn by bit bleed canvas. Okay, so the browser is now being drawn by the code inherited from BitBleed Canvas. It's a regular BitBleed browser. But if I create a, a clock, BitBleed cannot draw the clock because it's using the new vector graphics primitives. For, so when I create a clock, 
the the clock oh yes i changed the default font so i, I try to use it whatever it is it is um when when this hybrid canvas needs to draw the clock that uses the new vector graphics primitives it calls the vector engine and draws everything in small talk that's why that's a way uh, we can have a, a responsive system for using the old tools and we only pay a, a high performance uh, price for the new vector graphic stuff uh, when ever when we have the, the vector engine plugin and everything works fast, then I will remove hybrid canvas uh, and big canvas could become optional and everything will be drawn purely using vector graphics and these icons will no longer be there. So, well, this is all I, I had pre prepared and uh, we, you can ask questions or, or uh, whatever, or say whatever you want to say. Thanks. That's beautiful. Very good, very good. Well, thank you so much. I, I, I stopped the, the screen share and maybe I can use my camera again. So. Why? Wow, did, you, did, you, did you have problem with that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I was terrified. I, at, at some point, I, I thought I would need to, to ask everybody to reschedule this for some other time where things would work. Oh. <laughs> Question I had, um, apart from the the, the, the beauty and the uh, and the functionality, was that it reminded me uh, when in the in the late eighties, early nineties, I saw news yes. um, from, from Sun. But but this is comprehensible, and and the, and the language is so much so much more beautiful to program in. But it's the same kind of uh, superb expressive power, but. You know, then then they weren't. You know, they didn't even have something as beautiful as your as your clock. Things things were very were very crude, right? Yes, uh, I I named news in in one of the slides I showed at, at the start when I said that vector graphics for interactive systems is is not a new idea. It, there was news and also there was display postscript, but computers were not fast enough to do it. So yeah, the visual quality was was not good. And besides, they they didn't have a, a small token morphic, so everything was way more complicated. So yeah, we, we, here we are taking advantage of, of everything we have. Uh, modern fast computers, uh, signal processing theory, um, um, the ideas of vector graphics that these people used, uh, and, and small talk, of course. And the signal processing theory is, is something that I, 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 I keep repeating because to me it's a, it's a shame that people working on computer graphics don't study signal processing. Uh, Do you have okay. a list of um, reading material for people interested in that? Yes, uh, the, the easiest place to start, uh, let me paste a link, is the Wikipedia article on Angeliasing. Uh, oh, yeah. That already discusses uh, the, the stuff. Let me look for it. <laughs> you can also check the, you can also Google for, for my short article. Uh, yeah, the spatial anti-aliasing article on Wikipedia. I'm pasting the link in the chat. It's, it's quite good. Uh, at the first picture they show, they talk about a sync filter. A sync filter is a signal processing theory filter that does the stuff that should be done. Uh, and that people working on computer graphics seem not to focus on that. The third point in the Wikipedia article is signal processing approach to anti-aliasing. Uh, and that's what I am doing. Uh, oh, I actually, yeah. No, I have a question, but, but please finish. 
No, that, that I just was going to remark that I started doing these things before the Wikipedia article was written, and I was very happy when they started to 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 talk about the real stuff in there a few years ago. You know, I I did the squeak from the very start of video series a while back. Have you ever seen it? Sorry, what are you talking about? Um, have you have you ever seen my uh, introductory squeak videos? Squeak mm -hmm. from the very start. I'm pretty sure I have. Yes, but yeah, well, I'd, I'd love to do something like that for Quiz. Of course, be my guest. You, um, we can we can chat uh, afterwards if if you want and. Uh, you will have all my support and any help I can provide, of course. Yes, yes. Well, you know, I have to learn how to do the stuff before I can show others how to do it. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's what we wrote the 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 book for, right? So right. more people could get into this kind of stuff. And now I pasted the the link to the article I wrote on on this stuff. On the technique used by the machine specifically. Uh, and the reason I wrote this and the reason I published it here uh, is because it's a much better alternative to what others who are doing for anti-aliasing text. And I remember that at the time, for example, Microsoft had patterns on subpixel so anti-aliasing, they called uh, clear type. And so, for example, Linux needed to come with subpixel and aliasing disabled by default, and Apple never used it because Microsoft had patented it. And I came up with this idea that is better than clear type. Uh, uh, so I was scared that that someone would patent and, and steal it from us. Uh, so I published it uh, in a way that is in the previous art. Uh, intellectual property database that the U.S. Patent Office needs to consult before issuing a patent. So it's really uh, free now. Nobody can patent this now. Um, a question at twelve oh nine, Justin. Can you un unmute yourself when when one is finished and ask your question? Okay. Um, I, this just one more remark on this article. If you are going to read it and you are interested, it, it describes the how to sample uh, 2D graphics using sampling theory, and it doesn't describe the subpixel version. But the subpixel version is just taking three samples per pixel: one at the position of the red subpixel, another at the position of the green subpixel, and another at the position of the blue subpixel. And both are implemented in the quiz code. If you take a look, there are two uh, engine classes. One is subpixel, and the other is whole pixel. So all the stuff is there. Do you plan uh, to to generate uh, the the C code from uh, from Smalltalk with Slang or, or something? Mm, no, it's it's about. Let me see how many lines of code does this have. I don't even remember, but it's very small. Um, the, um, the whole pixel, yeah, is about 380 lines of code. Uh, uh, so I most likely I will rewrite it in C um, because that will allow me to use um, SIM, S, SIMD uh, idioms in C to generate uh, higher performance code. Okay, there are there are ways to 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 process several pixels or several subpixels in a single assembly language instruction, and uh, there are C extensions at least at GCC to take advantage of that. And the slang C code generator cannot use them right now. And the C code is not too much. And I have written a lot of C code in my life, so I, I will just write a little bit more. Uh, I, 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 some time ago, I, 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 some years ago, I had the experience of, of using OpenCL 
for image processing of satellite images in real time for Satellogic. And I really liked the experience and I was very happy with it. And I uh, wanted to use that for this project. I actually wrote the OpenCL version of this uh, of these routines. So I haven't written them in C yet, but I wrote them in OpenCL uh, and they work, but they are extremely slow. And the have, reason- Have you looked at Apple's new um, M1 features or I guess they're um, the Big Sur features? No, not yet. No, not yet. Uh, so, um, the, um, you know, the M1 features, which are not M M M1, the, the ARM V8, you know, they, they, they provide all of the kind of, of um, small vector um, uh, operations that you could imagine. They, they, they uh, typically work on, on one to four element operations and, and there's, and the data types are, are from 16 bit to 128 bit floating point. So you can have uh, a, a 128 bit uh, element with, with four uh, elements in the vector and one instruction that operates on them. Um, what I wanted- that, that, that seems to be a bit more than what Intel offers, but Intel has offered this kind of things for a long time already. Right. And there are intrinsic in, in GCC to, to access them from C. Right. All I all I wanted to say was was that you know that, that the arm the arm stuff is a little bit uh, is a little bit nicer than the x eighty six sixty four. It's it's a more comprehensive thing. But what I what I wanted to do, to to suggest is is that we at least have a, a a research project to compare the C against generating that code directly in the in the back end of the JIT because that's what the the sister optimizing uh, instruction set. Is, is designed to support. So um, extending that instruction set to, to include those those data types has, has always been the, the, the desire. And then um, that would be generated automatically from the, uh, from the small bit without any Okay. A first step in that direction could be to use SISTA as it is right now for this code and see uh, where we get with just that first step. I just want to say one thing because it's a persistent misunderstanding that, that I've been seeing several times in the past three, three weeks, and that's the, the distinction between a system and Scorch, the optimization system, and Sister, the bytecode set. So uh, Sister, the bytecode set is a bytecode set that supports Squeak, but also has a, a room in it for 256 assignable opcodes, of which we've currently assigned some uh, 30 of them. Uh, which would uh, extend uh, to cover a whole series of unsafe operations that cannot be used directly from small because they don't do checks. Uh, so they're entirely uh, non-polymorphic and they're, and they're fixed. But what we have in, in Squeak right now is that we can compile normal small talk to the small talk part of the sister bytecode set. And that really makes no difference in how fast small talk runs. In addition, if you then uh, augment the VM with uh, support for that unsafe uh, bytecode set and with a baseline JIT that uh, includes performance counters, then that system uh, identifies hot code and up in the image, something that's called Scorch, which is an adaptive optimizer, analyzes the small talk code, so it would analyze one's pure small talk. And from that would generate new versions of the methods which use this unsafe instruction set that currently Squeak does not use. And it's that unsafe instruction set that then allows you to generate the non-polymorphic code that runs fast. But we do not have sister in Squeak. What we have now is just the small part of the bytecode set, right? And what we're talking about when we're saying let's apply sister to uh, one's code is something quite different than just compiling to use the sister bytecode set. And I, I, I don't know why uh, people are confusing that from time to time. I'm not frustrated. Well, I, 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 I'm not sure if, if uh, all the time we confuse those things, but maybe we are, we are trying to, to speak in, in a kind of shorthand. Uh, way. Uh, I mean, uh, 
to use Sista for this code would mean either using your optimized free compiler or using a separate set of methods that use the new bytecode, the, the unsafe bytecode. I mean, we could simply have a, an unsafe byte at put, right? Why yes, not have this? Yes, all, all of those things are there already. But what we don't have is the uh, is the instruction set um, defined and the mapping defined so that um, a context would include a, a byte stack that could hold uh, the vector floating point data and a set of primitives that would operate on that 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 alternate stack. Uh, so if we're just talking about integers. The problem with the current model is that what you have on the small talk stack are small integers, whereas what you want is unboxed integers on a on a, a, a separate uh, unboxed uh, raw data stack and instructions that operate on that. And, and I haven't uh, I haven't done the context stack mapping machinery uh, to implement that yet. So this is you know part of the ongoing work. Well, but 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 in the meantime, we could use an, a native integers and floats in in arrays passed by reference, right? Just a pointer. Yes. Okay. That's enough to to get started. Uh, I I understand that that adding a, a separate stack for native data types uh, is a, a major work to be done on 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 the VM. Doesn't sound well, it's like. not so much that it's major work as, as that, you know, uh, if, if, if the community could cohere, then it would be work that could be done quickly. But, uh, and that's the key issue, but anyway. Yeah. That, yeah. Will be the, that, that will be the, the first time in 30 years since I was doing four uh, interpreters building something like that. I never thought about the possibility of doing this in a small talk VM. Yeah, it's been I'm about, certainly uh, not aware uh, of, any, of any small talk VM that does it now. No, but it's, it's you know, we've, uh, Clement and I have been talking about it for, for, for 10 years now. It was, it was an obvious uh, direction to go in. And, and we were discussing it in kind of 2011, you know, the, the, the makes perfect sense is to uh, extend uh, context uh, with a subclass optimized context that has a uh, an additional stack object which is which is byte data and a whole series of instructions which do basically at put on that on that byte data and then in the JIT those at puts and specific locations within that byte stack are mapped down onto the FPU registers. Um, so that's always the the idea, um, and 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 then you know if 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 uh, computation is 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 interrupted, the uh, the registers are written back to that state, yeah, and the small debugger yeah. presents it you know with the with the abstract uh, uh, computation model provided by context and the, and the debugger, and 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 you know that's a, that's a that's a two way uh, uh, bidirectional mapping. So it's a very attractive. Uh, way of going, the the the, the thing that's, that that it doesn't scale to is coprocessors. But even that, you know, you can imagine a virtualization scheme for coprocessors, depending on 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 what interconnect you have with with the uh, with the coprocessor, right? A remote context object or whatever that, that you can materialize and things. Um, and 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 that seems to me uh, again a very very powerful. A direction to go in, and 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 you know, again, using simu simulation as your as your way of, of 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 getting there. You know, this is all a very very coherent thing, and 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 what we what we need to do is 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 to is to cohere the engineering effort so that we can make non non glacial progress. You know, because because these ar architectural ideas are, are are straightforward and 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 realizable, and we and we have a really good understanding of it. What we what we're not doing is a, as a community trying to figure out how to um, uh, put uh, uh, effort in. Because the you know the benefits are clear. We could we could have something. Uh, uh, we could have this 
Quis model, pure in pure small talk, right? Having no more than the 380 lines running as fast as that you could get from the best C compiler. If we could only collect the engineering effort, right? But if we don't collect the engineering effort, we have to do all of this. We, 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 in the end, we, we have to do more effort, right? We have to write a compiler to C. We have to translate from the, et cetera. You know, and, 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 then, and then we have none of, the, none of the benefits that come from having the, 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 the Ouroboros, right? The, 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 the small talk compiler that, that can then apply to any small talk code in the image without needing uh, 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 to look at the, at the problem in isolation and, and consider that, that mapping, et cetera. You are absolutely right in, in that. Uh, coordinating uh, effort uh, has uh, always been uh, something very difficult uh, to do in our community. And, and most projects that, that did some uh, significant advance in any area uh, have been led by by one person that you perfectly are aware of yes you and i are in the same boat uh um, indeed yeah and it's it's it, 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 it must be it, I, I i i love your calm i you know i'm i'm much more volatile and so i i, <laughs> I rail and i and i complain um but you know you 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 look at the faro effort and the 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 the, um, the fact that they have uh, a one megabyte small talk VM and twelve megabytes of 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 SVG etc cetera, etc cetera, DLLs uh, Cairo DLLs uh, around it and a solution that is not debuggable that is fragile that 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 that, that is big that is that, that is clumsy and 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 if they'd have collaborated with you you know. <laughs> You would have been able to finish. You've been doing this for how long? Four years? Five years? Three Me? Years? Yeah. And this thing? No, yeah. over 15. 15 years. Right. Yes, yes. So. I, 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 I started this project. I, I remember I remember perfectly well because in 2003, I was lucky enough uh, to have lunch with Alan Kay and told him that I was thinking about starting this project. Um, and I, I already had uh, some of the ideas, others, I, I, I went discovering them in my way. But yes, that around that time, I started working on this. I, I forked Squeak uh, from 3.7 and, and started working on this, yeah, over 15 years ago. Not easy. It hurts. It hurts emotionally. <laughs> well, uh, I, I mean, I, I started this in, in a time where when I used to say uh, soon this place will be higher resolution and all the, the Windows and Mac stuff will break around 2004, maybe. Maybe, Leandro, you remember me talking about that in our lunch uh, at noon. Uh, mm -hmm. And nobody was paying attention to that. And then uh, Google did Android, and they said they were designing a very new user interface model from scratch and blah, blah, blah. And I said, OK, this guy will target phones. Phones vary a lot in resolution, so they will do it resolution independent. And what they do is to require the programmer to provide art in several different resolutions to pick the closest one to the display. Uh, so it's a piece of crap, okay? Yeah. What they did is a shame. Uh, and then we had the, the Mac retinas and all the stuff. Uh, but still, uh, what is a, a retina Mac doing with a, with a quick or, or quiz uh, image? It is scaling the pixels, okay? If you, if you start squeak or quiz in a retina Mac and ask for display extent, you don't get the real resolution of the machine. So uh, Apple is still scaling stuff because they don't have a decent programming model for handling the high resolution displays. They introduced it in the industry over a decade ago. 
so that's what hurts me. <laughs> Not spending 15 years on this. Uh, spending 15 years on this and think that the rest of the world is not catching up yet. <laughs> so we still have our, our edge over them if we can make this work uh, and, and be usable for everybody. Um, what, what can I say? We need to keep working. Yes. One, um, if possible, could we meet for 10 minutes immediately after the meeting? Because I, 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 I think the, the primitive that you want to access the display bitmap is already in the VM. Yes, of course. I, uh, I, I would be more than happy to, to do that. So Juan, I have a question which is more of a technical or, uh, or of, from a user perspective, right? So I've been using vector editing tools for a long time, like Inkscape or things like that. Yes. And, well, one of the, of the nice things uh, on your approach is that you can program your vector editing tool, right? So you can generate a lot of different vectors and generate stuff from there. So have you thought about writing a vector editing tool on quiz or something like that? Of course, uh, yes. Yes, and we are not that far, right? I, I already wrote an SVG parser that can that builds a structure of morphs for each SVG element. So uh, all you need to do is to, to use the, the morphic tools and Halo and stuff to group together your SVG morphs and just generate the SVG from that. Uh, um, I, I would not write a, a, a different tool. I would just improve the tools in yeah. Morphic so they get good enough to do that. Uh, something that I will want to do at some point, for example, is to do a nice tool for handling a control points in Bezier curves, that kind of stuff. That Squeak had uh, for for, their, for its splines many years ago. So it's stuff that is perfectly doable. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, for, I, for making presentations. For making presentations or just for replacing Inkscape, right? Yeah. In Inkscape, you use a, uh, a closed tool to build SVG. Uh, yeah, you don't need two different tools, Inkscape and yeah, some you don't slide. Need them. Up. Yeah. And if you want to, to build SVG art, just to export as SVG to some morph and it will work. It's easier to generate SVG than to parse it. And I did the parser. So doing the generator is, is a, like a print on on each morph. It's pretty easy to do. And what, what is the cost in performance um, compared to a typical rasterizing engine? So what, well, what, if, how much do you have to raster? Yeah, uh, I, I did an interesting experiment many years ago. It was over 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago for a previous version of this code, but pretty similar, not too, too different in the end. Um, and I compared its performance in a, I found online a benchmark between a, a written by the author of anti-grain geometry Anti-grain geometry was a big thing at some point, and then it was not developed any longer. Comparing anti-grain geometry and Cairo, okay, and showing that anti-grain geometry was much faster and higher resolution. Uh, uh, so I built the same benchmark uh, in C, using pure C without the SIMD or anything, um, and run it and compare it with them and. My code was faster than Cairo, but uh, slower than anti growing geometry. But it was more general and better quality, so it, it was okay. Yeah, uh, my, my engine is quite faster than Cairo. It's simpler too. Uh, Cairo is very complicated. It, it, <laughs> it's running the, it, it's doing a, a lot of complicated and, and expensive operations on the vectors or themselves before rasterizing them. Um, because of the approach they, they took to do pixel coverage. Um, oh. The approach is simpler and it's actually faster. And how do you compare it uh, 
I would say algorithmically or in the in the way that the graphics processing pipeline usually works, like uh, you, for example, just uh, set up a pair of points and then say, okay, now we have a rectangle. Now we have a, a window that we, where we have to uh, to prepare uh, no. our camera or viewpoint or things like that. So how does this compare no, to that? There are no camera or viewpoints because this is not 3D. Okay. okay. That, that is for 3D frameworks. In 2D frameworks, okay. you usually then don't comes another question, which is can it work on 3D? But okay, answer answer it, first. Yeah, it, it's it's not a, a, a 3D API. What I am doing is to simulating a, an, a pen that moves on a piece of paper. And that's what I am doing. And it's pretty simple, actually. When you, if you look at, at how it works, you, you will think I'm cheating, but it works. It's some, uh, some kind related to ray tracing or something like that? No, ray tracing is also for 3D. This is not 3D, this is 2D. Okay. It, it, it's plain, there is, there is no lighting, there is nothing of that. Javier, uh, what I, you should do to have a look at the 3D stuff is, is, is talk to Ronnie Salgado, you know, we're, we're um, in, in turf, Ron Teitelbaum, myself, and 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 Ronnie are working together on 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 turf, which is fully three D, and uh, we're using his engine. His engine um, is a um, a three D model with all of the power of OpenGL, and uh, it uh, is expressed as a set of primitives that run on a, a given GPU. So we have backends for Metal for Vulkan, for um, direct 3D and OpenGL. We don't use the OpenGL backend. And uh, this uh, uh, framework is driven uh, centrally by a in Smalltalk, Smalltalk to um, C++ compiler that generates the, the, the code that is then compiled into a, a DLL or a, or a, a Dilib that, that uh, runs uh, on the on the coprocessor and and has a full 3D model, and so uh, you know Ron is here today. We're, I think we're very very interested in in merging ones and uh, and Ronnie's model because you know this, the, the, we 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 also have the the, the overlay of, of of morphic on top of the the 3D so we have morphic widgets at the at, at the side of the 3D space to, uh, to to interact you know do text chat and all of that and and and, and to use a, a a beautiful scalable morphic is uh, is a, a, a much more attractive uh, approach than yeah, I, I took a, a quick look some some month ago after Elliot you told me at Ronnie's work, uh, um, and I didn't find uh, it to be a, an obvious backend for my work. Okay, I don't think it is. I think yeah, I, I agree. I agree. That's just a clarification. Although I, uh, the the possible interaction between both systems uh, is therefore a bit more complex to analyze, but uh, we should do it. Uh, I, I, I mean, the, the, we should integrate them in some way that makes sense. I still don't know we are, what that would be, but yeah, it would be cool to do it. That's really cool. yeah, I'd like to volunteer right, right now that, that perhaps in a, in a month or two months we, we, we do um, a, a talk on the current state of turf, but that we wouldn't do it in Zoom, we would do it in turf. Oh, that would be extremely cool. <laughs> well, I think we're Hi, this is Thorsten. I have a question too. Um, I remember back in Squeak when, uh, uh, when there was a, a um, Andreas implementing uh, um, uh, if you if you hit a morph, so you you he didn't he did a trick by not calculating uh, the, the the hit point, but if I remember correctly, it was he, he just painted it on a, on a form, in black and white, and then just checked if the pixel was black or white, so you could quickly find out if you have hit the morph or not. And in the in the initial uh, uh, start of the presentation, you said okay, this is handled by the framework. 
um, at the moment to find out if you hit the morph or not. How, how is this done in this vector kind of thing? Because you do not have the bitmap or form that you could find out the pixel. Well, I, I had a, 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 an idea and also memory is much cheaper today, okay? So if you have a high resolution screen with full color depths and, and all the stuff, maybe we are using something like eight megabytes of RAM for the pixels, right? And we're using usually 32 bits uh, per pixel. We use eight for red, eight for green, eight for blue, and eight, we don't use them, we waste them, we don't use them at all, okay? So what I did is to set up a, a, a separate uh, display object, okay? The same size, um, eight megabytes with 32 bits per pixel, and what I did is to use eight bits for flags. Uh, I, I think it's, it's useful to, to, to have uh, some auxiliary flags uh, for the engine to use. And the rest of the 32 bits are used for holding a morph ID. So each pixel actually knows which morph it was last drawn there. Okay. So all I need to do is to query the pixel and see if the ID matches the morph ID. That's why morph has an ID instance variable in Quiz. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's really cool. It's, a, it's extremely fast. It's a, it cannot be done faster than that. It's just a query in, on uh, a memory access. Cool, thank you. It's one of the advantages of, of writing the graphics engine myself, right? If I had used uh, Cairo, for example, uh, I would have to work a bit harder to prepare a separate surface and to hack the color management in Cairo uh, to use it for morph IDs and being sure that it doesn't do anti-aliasing because this cannot be blended, obviously. Uh, but just writing the, the code myself, remember when I showed you the, the method, the code that did byte at put, well, the next line did the same on the morph IDs instance variable that is parallel to the form. Um, and it works quite well. And that's also the reason why in, in, in Morphic 3, you don't need to answer the, the um, display rectangle for a morph. The engine can compute it itself when it draws the morphs and caches it in a private instance variable you never need to care about. So, sorry to interrupt for a second, folks. Here I'm back. I'm on my phone. I believe that uh, updating my Mac to the new Big Sur operating system may be the root of all this problem because it's used to yes. work very smoothly. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, please go on. I'm on my phone now. So one, if I want to get in touch with you, um, will, I can, I can, how can I get in touch with you in the next few minutes? In, in the, in the uh, chat, I, I wrote my Skype ID uh, and also my email and my Twitter. Uh, is Skype, it's okay with you. We can talk about Skype, yeah, okay. Skype and otherwise you can contact me via DM in Twitter or an email and we can. Right. Wherever you yeah. Guys, both, uh, both on Discord, well, no? So, sorry, um, I have um, uh, a request uh, for those those of us who can afford five or ten dollars a year. <laughs> I mean, we need very little money, but we have some. We we need some. We have some, and we need some. So, if you can donate five dollars, ten dollars. Uh, that would be uh, very good for, for us because uh, there are some admin costs, uh, the bank, etc. involved. Uh, so just uh, that. Uh, if I don't want to bother anyone, but uh, just consider it. Sure. Okay. If okay. There's, there is nothing else uh, i hope to see you in a few days we will let you know of the next talk and uh, be safe and keep in touch okay 
Thank bye you. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank, you. Thank you very Thank much, you. everyone. I hope bye you bye. Bye. Nice job, one. Bye, please. Thank you again. Bye bye. By the way, Elliot, I don't know if you were here earlier to see Queese on uh, a. Uh, uh, yeah, I saw it. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's super cool. I saw you doing it. And it's it works. It works. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you again for the VM work. All these no, years. you're welcome. welcome. Thank you. Thank you for you know all of your work for the VM too. So. Oh, not not much there. Dropping dropping the bucket, but the uh, the sea is the the ocean. Whole ocean is made of drops. So. Yes, exactly. All, all that up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Take care. Thank you.